Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, JDC family. My name is Jay. This is my Diecast Creations channel. And we got a couple things going on today, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, give me one second. All right, I'm back. So as most of you already know, I'm on a mission to acquire all of these 70 Chevy Chevelle race cars, right? We got the loose one. We got the Target Red Edition. We acquired in a trade with Red Eye 247. We got the Night Burners in blue. Alex Graff is sending me the Amber. It's like an orange or a burnt brown um, in this scheme. And also, the mainline version of this super treasure hunt that I got from SRS Diecast in a trade for a custom that I'm actually building him right now. We got the Gulf livery with a banged up card. I got this from my buddy Ham. In a lot of stuff that he had up in his attic. <clears throat> and then we got this one here that I found at a swap meet. Car show. Right? So, at the moment, we got five main lines and the super. That is about to change, folks. That is about to change. I pulled off a trade. Ford fan diecast. Great supporter of the channel. He saw these trucks that I picked up. These are the old ones from 1999 with the general tires, general VersaTrack tires on them. They come in a square box with the Hot Wheel logo, like cut into the top or whatever. Um, picked up a lot of them. I was going to use them for wheel swaps. And then I realized people might want these for their collections. So I figured I'd use some of them as trade bait, right? He asked me what I wanted for, for one of them. I said, you got any of these Chevelles? He said, I don't, but let me look. And then he sent me a picture and he said, will this do if I can get my hands on it? And I said, absolutely. If you can get your hands on that car, I'll trade you one of these trucks, fair and square, right? That's what's in this box. That is what's in this box. I don't think he would have added anything extra in here. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited to get my hands on this car, though. It's not a super rare one to find, but it is really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Really, really cool. And right up my alley. Right up my alley. We have the premium. Oh, wow. It's in a protector case, too. Oh, you didn't have to do that. We have the premium track day series, baby. Track day 70 Chevy Chevelle. Look at this thing. Look at this thing in that white with the silver stripe down the side. 145 on the door in the, the number template. It's got the stripe down the middle. You got the Hoosier Hot Wheels Chevy logo on the, on the side there. Real Rider tires. I don't know what those rims are called. <clears throat> metal base, metal body. This is a premium, you know. Awesome, awesome car. I'll crack it out of this uh out of this protector case. I don't know if he added this or if it came to him like this. I'm assuming he purchased this car. Um I'm assuming he purchased it. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. I don't see any defects. It's a little tiny mark. 
right there on the back fender. And which could just be a speck of dust or something too. Nice, clean, clean car. They did a good job on this one, that's for sure. So that is now in my possession in the collection. This was the Track Day series from 2016 copyright, so it would have been 2017. You got the, the 70 Chevelle, the Porsche 964, the 78 Porsche 935, which is a really cool car. I think this one just came out in a case, if I'm not mistaken, as a mainline. I think that's the car. I could be wrong. Um, you got the Datsun Bluebird 510. And then this Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, which I'm pretty sure Alex Graff just showed that or had said that he saw. I remember this car. I think it was Alex because he's the Volkswagen guy. Um, so, yeah, awesome, man. Thank you to Ford Fan Diecast for making this trade. I hope you're happy with the truck. And um, if anybody else comes across these Chevelles that I don't have... Hit me up because I'm 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 wheeling and dealing to get all of these things. Wheeling and dealing, right? So that's that. We're gonna add we're gonna move this charger out of the way. This is gonna be destined for a wheel swap soon. <clears throat> so we're gonna slap that bad boy there. Boom. Boom boom boom, right? We got the super. Whoa, whoa, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay. We'll just do that. We'll do that. Alright. These cards are, are, are pretty banged up. Eventually, I don't know. If I get them all, I might crack them all. We'll see. You guys let me know down in the comments what you think about that. If I should crack them all when I get them all. Besides the, the Super. I won't crack the Super because it's in a factory sealed. It's a factory sealed set. Um, super. So that thing's mint. Mint. So that's the trade that went down. For this premium track day. 70 Chevy Chevelle. Awesome, awesome car. Super happy to have it in my collection. Um... I got other news. <laughs> In other news, we got one of these. You guys know what that is? Most of you know what that is. It's an airbrush washing cleaning jar, right? Psh, psh. I'm assuming you spray the stuff in there. Got to watch a video to see exactly how this works. But um, I was always skeptical about getting into the airbrushing, right? Part of it was, um, I don't want to clean a thing. I thought it was going to be this big process. You get all dirty and chemicals and this, that, and the other thing. Um, Andrew over at Maple Leaf Customs put out a video the other day on his homemade brew of like what he uses to clean his airbrush. Um, and then I talked to Jimmy over at DT99 Race. And he was like, yeah, man, it's easy, you know. So I started watching some videos. Um, and it's one, two, three, man. It's one, two, three. And, you know, you blow the thing out and it's good to go, you know. So it's not that hard. Um, I'm glad that I, that I started to look into that because, you know, I probably would have had that assumption for a while. Um. I'm sitting at Thanksgiving dinner. Was it Thanksgiving dinner? Yeah, it's Thanksgiving dinner. My dad was up here. I was at my sister's house. And I seen on Amazon, Black Friday deal, the Badger 105 Patriot was on sale for like 70 bucks, I think. So I was like, hey, dad, um, how much money is, <laughs> how much money you plan on spending on me for my, for Christmas? <laughs> He's like, he laughed. He's like, why? What do you want? What? Are you, how much money you want me to spend? You know? Ah. So I told him, I was like, look, man, 
This thing's on sale. I know it's a good brush. And uh, he's been following what I do. And he thinks it's super cool. So he was like, you know what? I know you're going to use it. And if that's what you want, that's what we're going to do. So he got up on there on Amazon. Boom, boom, boom. Punched it in. My dad lives in Florida. They drive a big rig cross country, you know. So instead of uh, instead of having it shipped to his house, I'd wrap it and then, you know, ship it up here. He just had it shipped directly to the house, right? <clears throat> so the Badger 105 Patriot is going to be my first airbrush. I've watched a bunch of videos, and it looks like this thing is a workhorse. It looks like this this thing lays it down, has no real issues as far as jamming up very easily or anything like that. Um, it's got a 0.5 needle, which is a heavy needle. And this airbrush, which I'm kind of glad that I went with this one. And and some people might 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 get thrown off here. But hear me out. The Badger 105 it has a 0.5 needle. It's a heavy needle. It's rated for 15 PSI. Right? I don't have a huge compressor here. I don't plan on doing like fine detail work and stuff like that. I needed a brush that could lay down primer, paint, and clear coat in the winter. Primarily acrylics. Because I'm about to have twins in this house. I can't be spraying um, enamels in here. And I don't have a, a booth. So I'm going to be going downstairs in the basement. Hitting it up. Coming back up. Letting it dry, right? Now, this is going to throw some people off. This thing's rated for 15 PSI. I've been instructed by multiple people in this hobby to go with 25 to 30 PSI, right? They don't necessarily use this brush. I also was instructed to go with a compressor with a tank, okay? I didn't listen to you guys. <laughs> I didn't listen to you guys. Um, I watched a bunch of reviews and videos, right? There's this guy called Barbados Rex. He does um, tests on a lot of different paints and airbrushes and compressors and, you know, anything hobby related, right? He tested this airbrush with a very similar cordless compressor, right? This is a battery powered YF, UFU, YF, UFU, right? It's a battery-powered Chinese compressor. Um, the one that he tested was the no-name brand uh, from SprayGunner.com, right? But after looking at, you know, what's what, I figured out that the ones on Amazon are just rebranded on their website. They literally send it out in the same packaging, Minus all the other stuff. It's just this for 50 bucks, right? So I ended up getting this with the air hose, a cleaning kit, and another cheap airbrush, right? For around about the same price. I think I paid a couple dollars more. Worst comes to worst, I use this once. I don't like it. I send it back. It's Amazon. You can do that, right? So I figured I'd give it a shot. In the worst case scenario, um, if it does work and I don't love it, but I can lay down some paint, wouldn't it be awesome to have a travel pack that you don't have to lug around uh, a huge compressor or whatever to go on the road and, and, and do some stuff if you wanted to, right? So we're going to give this a shot. I watched Barbados Rex. He laid down. Um, a bunch of of paint with this compressor and this Badger 105, right? Okay, that's as loud as it goes. Right? 
I don't know if you guys can see how much. It's a pretty, pretty good amount of air. I've never, I've never airbrushed before, but I'm excited to see what this thing can do. You know, if it can't get it done, then it is what it is. I'll send it back and I'll go the second route that me and Jimmy actually talked about. And I plan on setting that up anyway. Um, it's going to be, I have, <clears throat> excuse me guys, my throat's a little dry here. <clears throat> I have a um a shop compressor out in the shed. So I'm going to end up getting a uh air tank. A small air tank and I'll get a water separator and a regulator, mount that to my hobby um armor here and I'll be able to fill the air tank, bring it in, hook it up, spray what I need to spray and you know refill it out there. This way there's no noise in the house. This that and the other thing, right? I'm excited to see what I can do with this airbrush, guys. This thing's going to be awesome. I'm glad that I went with the Patriot. I'm glad that it's got a heavy needle. So I can lay down the clear coats. I can lay down the spray. I can lay down the primer. We're going to do a lot of testing. A lot of testing on on the Apple Barrel Paints. Um, and, and all types of other stuff. So we'll see what happens there. But that's that. That is that awesome trade Ford fan diecast. I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. If you guys haven't seen the pink slips tournament, we got some heavy hitters coming in. Outlaw Speed Shop. I believe DT99 Race is sending in a car. We got Jim Silva. His car's in the mail right now. King Nut Diecast. Mike's Mod said he might be able to do something. Man, oh man. I got SRS's Porsche sitting up there, ready to go, right? So many other people that I can't even think of right now have hit me up and said, yo, we're send I'm sending in a car. I think Andre Cruz is getting down. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? I don't even know. I don't even know, guys. This is going to be It's gonna be awesome. It's going to be awesome. So if you haven't seen that, you know, I got to go and update my channel. I'll pin the, uh, I'll update that as my main video right there. Pink slips. You got until February 1st to get me your entry and you'll be locked in for that tournament. <clears throat> Something happened today. Um, I didn't want to get into it. I'm not going to get into it, but it goes to show that not everybody has the same integrity as others. And um, it's better to take the high road sometimes. You know, I've been bothered all day um, by by something that happened. And I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to let it get under my skin. I'm not going to let him get a rise out of me. Right. But if you know, you know. And um it's not okay to to it's not okay to take somebody's idea, change it around, claim it as your own, and give no credit where credit was due, right? That's that. I don't own the rights to this to this game that I'm that I play over here with the with the roll offs and all that. With that being said, I have been working on a game, um, a roll-off game with uh, bonus cards and um, hazard cards and a whole deal, different racing modes and different tracks and this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, I was keeping that kind of hush-hush because I wanted to, I wanted to um, surprise you guys with it. But it turns out, you know, somebody else decided they were going to basically run with that and um, and claim it as their own. So it is what it is. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. Um, just don't be that guy, man. Like, I know who I know who it is and I know how he is. And it is what it is. Um, I'm not going to bash anybody. But 
if you take somebody's idea and even if you took inspiration from it, give credit where credit's due. That's all, you know. That's what got under my skin. But we're not, you know, that's that's the that's the most breath I am gonna waste on that subject. Um, back to business. We got another Chevelle in the in the collection. Awesome, awesome car. We're up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them now. Seven out of fifteen. We're gonna get them all. We're gonna get them all. That Toys R Us edition and the Zamac are gonna be the hardest ones to get, but that's okay. Um, I gotta work on Derek over there, Honest Diecast, and, and see if I can work out the the black and the green. Um, Alex Graff has the the amber version of that and the main line of this so that might be four more and then i gotta look at what i'm missing but um cool 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 guys i hope you enjoyed this video i'm carrying it out it's 21 minutes long today was a funny day I, i'm glad you guys put those videos out because i was a little upset and i was down in the dumps for for a bit and then i seen uh eddie over there from simple customs doing the mark impression and then I see Hewitt's jump on and with the chainsaw and the teeth and the hammer, man. You guys have me rolling. You guys have me rolling. It's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Love you guys. Love you guys. Love all of you guys. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to be it for today, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.